If you look at the microbial communities on people suffering from various diseases, so we're all home to about 500 to 1,000 different species, and if you look at the collection of these organisms on people with multiple sclerosis, diabetes, even autistic children have a very different collection of microbes when compared to healthy people, suggesting that the type of microorganisms that you're associated with can influence disease susceptibility. Inflammation is a central component in a wide variety of different human diseases that stem from cancer to cardiovascular disease to neurodegeneration, as well as a whole handful of different autoimmune disorders. And so it really has become imperative that we understand how inflammation works and how it's regulated. And in particular, a lot of people have been very interested for quite some time in trying to understand how inflammation is regulated, genetically speaking. Why drug resistance? Well, I decided this is really a fundamentally important problem because it's common not just to lung cancer, but to many types of cancer. Um, it's almost inevitable um, that, that the majority of cancers experience some kind of uh, ineffective treatment because of this problem. And this problem is really inherent to the nature of cancer. So by definition, cancer is largely thought of as a genomically unstable disease. And so because of this instability, it's very evolvable and mutable and basically subject to natural selection. So all it takes is one cell with a resistance mechanism that can survive perturbation or stress and it's gonna go on to reproduce the tumor and cause a problem. As an experimentalist, it actually becomes really hard to understand what has been going on over a billion years of divergence. And so what I decided to do as a postdoc and now in my lab is to take sort of an extreme opposite approach. And that's not to think about what happened a billion years ago, but to think about what happened yesterday. And so I picked a set of peculiar creatures to study in this regard. And here are a few of them uh, shown here. And so uh, what we're doing in my lab is actually asking among the primates, what are the genes that are changing the most? And can this teach us something about evolution? And if so, are these same evolutionary processes that have been playing out for a billion years, do we learn something that's applicable back, to, back in time, basically? Right, my lab studies molecular machines on the mesoscale. And what does that mean? It means we're interested on about a nanometer-ish scale on which lots of proteins get together and come to life. Where complicated and, and important machines function as, as, as interlocking parts to do fundamental things in cells. And within that kind of ridiculous heading, one project in my lab right now is to understand protein quality control. What are the factors that monitor the health and vitality of the proteins being made by the ribosome? We're also working on organelle growth and organelle division and the roles these play in immunity and metabolism. One of the sort of more fascinating aspects of what, what the brain does is to store information, and especially store information for a long, long, uh, long, long time, in some cases uh, our lifetimes. And so uh, it was really this uh, question that, that my lab is interested in, this, this broad question. And one thinks about what makes who you are. Uh, one of the things is, of course, all the things that you experience and the memories that you uh, accumulate. And one of the most devastating things that can happen is when you you start to lose these memories in, in some of the cognitive disorders that, that are, uh, are prevalent, in, uh, especially in older, uh, as, you, as you age. To improve outcome and prevent disease, we, we need to understand the genetic underpinnings of congenital heart disease. But it's like finding a needle in the haystack. Every one of us have 10 to 15,000 DNA changes that result in amino acid changes. Of these, around 2,000 are considered rare or novel. Of these, 500 predicted to be damaging. And then in some of the studies that I've looked at, 30 to 50 of these genes are involved in heart formation and development. And so it's really challenging to figure out which one or, or group of genes are, are causing congenital heart disease. But here in Utah, we have access to some, some amazing families and to some amazing resources that I think are making this a uh, very difficult task possible. Mistakes in wiring um, that could happen during development could be that you might form too few synapses, you might form too many of the correct synapses, or you could form the wrong kind of synapses. 
And we now know that seemingly subtle defects in connectivity, like this, can have a very big impact on neural function. And in particular, um, there are many genes that are known to regulate synapse form and function that are implicated in um, human disorders of cognition and psychiatric disorders like autism, intellectual disability, and many kinds of psychiatric disorders. We used uh, some of the clinical resources here at Utah and said, in human infants who are born premature, if you have higher magnesium levels, do you do better? And so we kind of, we chose a kind of simple outcomes. And we said, does it change how often you get cerebral palsy, just based on what your magnesium levels were? Does it change how often you get epilepsy or seizures? And in fact, we found this kind of cool association. The higher your magnesium level was, the lower your risk for developing cerebral palsy. The same thing for epilepsy. The higher your magnesium level was as a premature infant, the lower your risk for developing epilepsy or seizures. The problem of psychiatric disorders is very complex. It brings together multiple factors. It brings together genetics, parents, environmental factors, and epigenetics. Epigenetic factors are marks that are established on the genome to influence gene expression in response to environmental factors. And my lab thinks that uh, we have unlocked an important door uh, that will change our understanding of the factors that drive behaviors and influence psychiatric disorders.